The Wright Brothers, A Flying Start, by Elizabeth MacLeod. About 100 years ago, in just 12 seconds, the world changed forever. On December 17, 1903, near Kitty Hawk, North Carolina, Wilbur and Orville Wright made the first controlled powered flight. The Wright's airplane, or flying machine as it was called then, traveled only 36 meters, or 120 feet, a little more than half the length of a pro hockey rink. But the brothers had achieved something that no one else had. Early Years As kids, Wilbur and Orville loved fixing machines and experimenting. To earn extra money, they sold kites to the neighborhood children in Dayton, Ohio. Orville tried another money-making schemes, such as collecting bones for a fertilizer plant, gathering old wood and metal for a junkyard, and even putting on a circus. The brothers were also interested in printing. When Wilbur was in his teens, he invented a machine to fold papers for mailing. Orville was about 14 when he and a friend set up a small printing firm. To get more experience, Orville worked for a printer for two summers. Then, with Wilbur's help, he built another printing press using a gravestone for part of it and opened his own print shop. Sometimes the brothers' experiments and hobbies got in the way of school. They skipped classes, and once Orville was even expelled. At 18, Wilbur planned to go to Yale University and become a minister. But one day, while playing hockey, a teammate accidentally hit him from, hit him and knocked out his front teeth. Surgery and false teeth restored Wilbur's face, but he lost his confidence. During his long recovery, Wilbur gave up the idea of university. Besides, Orville wanted to start a newspaper and would need Wilbur's help. Pictured below is Wilbur when he was four years older than Orville, um, than he, than Orville. and here's Wilbur at 12 on the left and Orville at 8 on the right. Newspapers and Bicycles Orville's dream of publishing a newspaper came true on March 1, 1889, with Wilbur's help. Wilbur edited the West Side News, a weekly paper, while Orville printed and sold it. With the two brothers working together, the paper did so well that after a year, they decided to give it a new name and publish it every day. But the new evening item couldn't compete with other daily papers, and the last issue appeared just four months later. The print shop was doing well, but the brothers wanted a new challenge. What to do next? Cycling was a growing sport, and Orville often competed in local races. Wilbur preferred long rides in the country. Friends were always asking the Wrights to repair their bicycles. So when they were in their early 20s, the brothers opened a bicycle shop called the Wright Cycle Company. They weren't alone. More and more stores opened, and competition got tougher and tougher. Early bicycles had huge front wheels and tiny back wheels and were difficult to ride, but the new bicycles that the Wright brothers sold had two wheels of the same size, like today's bicycles. They were called safety bicycles because they were so much easier to ride. The first issue of the West Side News was published on March 1, 1889. Paul Lawrence Dunbar, a friend of Orville's, often wrote for the paper. Dunbar would later become the first nationally famous African-American poet. Business was slow. Wilbur thought again about going to college. He'd read and studied a lot while recovering from his accident, and his amazing memory retained most of what he read. But Orville convinced him to stay to help expand the bicycle business. Instead of just selling and repairing bicycles, they would also build them. That was just the kind of challenge Wilbur and Orville loved. Then, in August 1896, Orville suddenly became ill with typhoid fever, a severe illness caused by bacteria. For weeks, he lay unconscious, close to death. Wilbur stayed with him, nursing him, and reading to him. Finally, in October, Orville's fever broke, and he began to get better. Wilbur read a lot during those long hours by Orville's bed, including an article about an inventor and his flying machines. Life would never be up for the same for the life would never be the same for the Wright brothers. Up in the air. The inventor of flying machines whom Wilbur had read about was Otto Lilienthal. He was a German engineer famous for his experiments with gliders. But Lilienthal wasn't the first to try to invent a flying machine. 
Back in 1500, inventor and artist Leonardo da Vinci sketched airplane-like machines, although he never built them. Then in 1783, Joseph and Aiton Montgolfier launched the first hot air balloon in France. No one knew if it was safe to breathe so far above the earth. To find out, the brothers tied a basket to the balloon and placed a duck, a rooster, and a sheep in it. All three animals survived, although the sheep stepped on the rooster. A few weeks later, two men went up in the balloon, but balloonists could only drift with the wind. What inventors wanted was a machine whose flight could be controlled. Otto Lilienthal based his work on what he'd learned from watching birds. He was the first to pilot a glider successfully and went on to build 16 different types. All serious inventors knew the work of Daniel Bernoulli, a Swiss scientist. In 1738, he realized that the faster a fluid, such as air, moves, the, pres the less pressure it exerts. This is called Bernoulli's principle, the basis for all flight. For example, a bird's wing is more curved on the top than on the bottom. The air going over the wing has to go a little farther than the air going under the wing because of that curve, but it has to do it in the same amount of time, so it has to go faster too. Bernoulli discovered that the faster the air moves, the less pressure it exerts, so the air under the wing pushes up harder than the air on top pushes down. This extra pressure pushes or lifts the bird into the air. British experimenter Sir George Cayley decided several glider, designed several gliders using Bernoulli's principle. In 1849, he launched a glider that carried a 10-year-old boy a short distance. Five years later, Cayley set up his carriage driver in a glider. The driver quit when he landed, but Cayley kept working to build a steerable glider. Cayley's work inspired Otto Lilienthal. By 1896, Lilienthal had made about 2,000 glider flights. His next step was to add power. That's what Lilienthal was doing when his glider crashed and he was killed. His death might have scared off most people, but it didn't frighten the Wright brothers. They were ready to tackle the challenge of flight. Some of the flying machines sketched by inventors, like the one at the top of this page, look so odd that it's hard to believe anyone really thought they could ever fly. According to Bernoulli's principle, the air going over the curved wing of a bird or airplane goes farther and faster than the air going under the wing. The faster moving air exerts less pressure, so the air under the wing pushes up harder than the air on top pushes down, lifting the bird or plane into the air. The right way. Like many other inventors at the time, the Wright brothers wanted to invent a machine capable of powered controlled flight. They soon realized that such a machine would need three things. One, wings strong enough to lift a person into the air. Two, an engine that could move the machine forward fast enough so that the air flowing over the wings kept the machine airborne. Three, a way to control its path and direction. Wilbur and Orville worried most about controlling the flying machine. It was lack of control that had killed Lilienthal. One day, while watching pigeons fly by, Wilbur noticed that one of the birds changed the position of its wing tips to turn. If the brothers could figure out how to change or warp the shape of a machine's wings during flight, they could control its direction. A little later in the bicycle shop, after fixing a puncture in an inner tube, Wilbur fiddled with the long, narrow cardboard box the inner tube had come in. He twisted the two ends of the box in different directions. When he twisted one way, the top left end of the box and the bottom right were up. When he twisted the other way, the top right and bottom left ends came up. Just like the right and left wings of a bird, he thought. Maybe this was the way to change a flying machine's wings and control flight. Wilbur and Orville decided to try it. By the summer of 1899, they had built their first model, a double-decker kite, and were ready to test it. There are three basic movements an airplane can make. It can pitch, which means its nose goes up and down. It can roll, or dip its wings from side to side. Or it can yaw, turn from side to side. Go fly a kite. The double-decker kite that Wilbur and Orville built was equipped with cords attached to its wing tips so the brothers could experiment with wing warping. In the spring of 1900, the Wright brothers began building a glider strong enough to carry a person. 
With such a heavy load, they knew they'd need high winds to launch it, so they wrote to the National Weather Bureau to find the windiest places in the United States. The brothers also contacted flying machine inventor Octa Octave Chanute, who, who recommended sand hills for soft landings. Kitty Hawk, North Carolina, fit the brill, and it was windy, with lots of sand dunes nearby. Finally, the weather conditions were just right. On October 3, 1900, with the help of a local man, Bill Tate, the Wrights carried the glider to the highest sand dunes on the island. The area had a threatening name, Kill Devil Hills, but it was the perfect launching point. Wilbur couldn't resist trying to out the glider. With Orville and Tate each holding a wing, and Wilbur in the middle, they ran with the machine into the wind until it began to lift. Then Wilbur scrambled in. But just as the glider lifted him off the ground and he yelled, Let me down, Orville yanked the glider down and ang angrily demanded an explanation. I promised Pop I'd take care of myself, said his brother. The brothers flew the glider a few more times before heading home to Dayton on October 23rd. When they analyzed the glider's flight, they were puzzled. According to Lilienthal's data, it shouldn't have flown the way it did. Wilbur and Orville decided they were incorrect and obviously needed more experience. They would later find out that they were right and Lilienthal was wrong. The 1900 glider was made of wooden ribs with a shiny cotton covering. When the brothers were finished with it, Bill Tate took the wing fabric home and his wife made dresses for their daughters. The rights go wrong. By the summer of 1901, Wilbur and Orville were ready to return to Kill Devil Hills. They'd built a bigger glider, and Octave Chanute had sent two people he'd worked with to help. But everything went wrong. Rain poured down, the brothers were sick, mosquitoes buzzed constantly, and one of Chanute's men's wa men was useless. On top of all this, the Wright's new glider didn't fly very well. Once, with Wilbur aboard, it rose into the air, then almost stopped moving the same situation that had killed Lilienthal. Luckily, Wilbur was able to land safely. The brothers realized they still had a lot to learn. A depressed Wilbur and Orville headed home in mid-August. Back in Dayton, the brothers were filled with doubts. Why should they achieve their goal of powered, controlled flight, when so many others, better educated and skilled, had failed? Orville decided to recheck the data they'd collected from other inventors' work. He attached small wings of different shapes to a bicycle wheel, tipped on its side, and turned it to see how the wings reacted. Orville, back to the camera, and Wilbur tried flying their glider as a kite. The wing above Orville's head was attached to the front of the glider to balance it as it climbed and descended. Orville soon realized that the data he and Wilbur and other inventors had used were wrong, but he didn't know by how much. To find out, he rigged up a wind tunnel in a 46 centimeter or 18 inches long wooden box. The wind tunnel allowed the Wrights to test how air moves over a wing. It worked well, and Orville spent hours experimenting. The brothers built a bigger wind tunnel and tested more than 200 wing shapes. Their conclusions were astounding. All the previous data were wrong, and the Wrights were right. The brothers finally had the information they needed about wing shape and lift to design a flying machine. This is a replica of the wind tunnel used by Orville and Wilbur. Their experiments were tedious and slow, but the brothers were making new discoveries. In the picture on the top, you can see how big the 1901 glider is compared to Orville. It was the largest glider ever flown up to this point.